These two have been getting very, very close. She got on the Amiri. I ain't going to lie to you. Effie broke me down this episode. I ain't. Mm -hmm. Get focused, Mo. Get focused. We supposed to be talking about the Tejada story. Oh. Yay. My. Effie in here looking good as a motherfucker. Now, Kane's in here also now. Kane's supposed to be a dope boy, but Kane shouldn't be in these dorm rooms. I'm in Germany right now, in Deutschland. I'm in Deutschland right now. Kane's been staying in this room, this dorm room. Look how small that bed is. Look how small that bed is. That's the bed that you get when, you know what I'm saying, you finally get out of your crib, your parents buy you a bed. It's a little twin size. And this is like a... This ain't even a twin size. This is like a, a U size. This bed is big enough for you. It's big enough for you to get in the bed, lay there, and not move. If you roll over, you on the floor. Now, Kane, he's been trying to get away from his mama. He's been out of the house. He's already been kind of iffy on Effie. But we know that Lefty lies a lot. But when you're in the dope game, you just need somebody. You need someone to lay up with, someone to kiss, someone to miss when you're away. Hey, shut the fuck up. So she's in here doing her application. And the application that she's doing is to go to Stanford for the robotics program. Because remember, last week she missed the interview that she was supposed to have with Stanford because she had to go help out Kane to try to make that play with the Russians. Now, the Russians are saying that they're going to work directly with Effie. So for Kane hearing this, it kind of hurts him because he wants to move up in the ranks. But as we progress in the story, we see how close him and Noma are starting to get. Last week, they choked Kane out. Him and Noma had a, a drink over some scotch, and they kind of handled whatever little, you know, saying disparity there is between the two of them. Now, Effie is showing a little softer side. Most of the time, we don't see this from Effie. We always see the opportunist side. We always see Effie trying to figure out how she's going to survive. So her and Kane, they're getting closer and closer. She got to do this application, but she's just making sure that Kane is all right. So what she's doing is making Kane believe... He go suck it. I mean, brother. <laughs> he go suck it. I mean, brother. <laughs> What Effie is doing is she's using the power of the P-U-S-S-Y. Now, a lot of brothers fall for that, but it is what it is. Sometimes it be like that. Sometimes that thing get thrown on you and you get kind of confused, discombobulated, trying to figure out where you at. You're trying to figure out which way is up. Now, if you a player like your boy, then you're not going to fall for that. You know what I'm saying? You're just trying to get that monkey and dip. You know when you go to the zoo? You see the animals, you see the monkeys, and you go home. You ain't confused about what's going on. The zoo is the zoo. The monkeys are in that cage. You don't want the monkey to get out. But see, the monkey is getting out, and the monkey is climbing up on top of that pole where it ain't supposed to be. And we talking about Cain. So Cain, he all fucked up in the game. Effie is telling him that she cares about him and wants to make sure that he's all right. So in his mind, his whole judgment is clouded. He's like, damn, this is fun. You know what I mean? She's fucking with your boy. I got shit to do. My mama calling me up. Hey, F you, I got to go. Oh, don't worry about it, Kane. I'm going to make sure you all right. Are you okay? Go guys. So when you hear that, it's like, oh, this is love right here. This is the real deal. Now, if you're a real nigga, then we done all been played before in life. It's part of the game. You want to get played early. You want to get played in your early 20s. So I say preferably between like the ages of 18 to 21 is when you, when, when you, when you, when you primarily want to get played. You want to get played at the early age so you can look back at it now as a 38-year-old. Like, damn, she played your boy. But it's not really getting played if you play the game right. But that's a whole nother story. But what we're saying is you want that monkey to use you not calling Effie a monkey. I'm talking about the monkey, monkey, the pussy. You want that monkey to use you at an early age so this would be a learning experience. And this is what Kane is going through. 
So right now he's believing that Effie is really like caring for him. Oh, I skipped my interview for you, Kane. Now I got to do my application because I'm trying to get up out of here. So Kane is believing this and thinking that she actually cares. In reality, she don't care. Because nine times out of ten, at this age, hell, even at this age that I'm at, they fucking with some other niggas. And it's all right being number two and number three. But you don't want to be four, five, and six. When you get to, like, four, five, and six, that's when you get into that dirty nigga territory. You don't want to be in there. You want to be, like, top three. Preferably number two, but three is all right. You see what I'm saying? But I'm giving away too much of the game right now. Let's continue on. So Kane is over here, and Effie's like, yeah, Kane, don't worry about it. I'm doing this for you. So we get back to the house because we got the family text message. But remember, we're doing the whole to hide a story. So we go over to Mecca's old crib, a.k.a. Dante. And we got Drew and Diana. Now, these two are the non-dynamic duo. That's what I dubbed them as. These two have been trying to get rid of Monet. The whole thing that we talked about with Monet and Tariq with the damn ring camera footage where we showed Diana. Big perspective. We know Diana was trying to set this shit up. The big perspective, we know that Drew was involved. Episode two, we know that Drew was trying to go ahead and finish off Monet with the pills. But we seen in episode two that Monet, even though she's recovering, Diana had a change of heart. So when they're at the crib, we see Drew standing on business. What does Drew do? Drew goes to the stash, and instead of going to the refrigerator getting the orange juice, he reaches behind the orange juice next to the spoiled milk. There's a toolie back there. Click, clack. He puts the motherfucking thing in his back. You know what I'm saying? He puts it in his waistband behind him. Diana's talking about, what are you doing, Drew? He's like, man, fuck all that. I'd rather be caught with it than without it. Diana's like, no, 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 no. Let's fall back. Let's see what Monet got going on. Drew's like, did you not forget what the fuck we were trying to do? So we're starting to see Drew start to boss up. And I know a lot of people, they don't disagree. I mean, they don't agree. I was going to say disagree. But they don't agree with what Drew is going on. A lot of people are saying that he needs to be unalived. And I agree with that sometimes. But this is how the story. And sometimes we got to be on Drew's side. Y'all know I fuck with Drew since way back when. But I don't fuck with Drew in that sense that you guys are thinking because we know what Drew does. Drew is he he, and we ain't like that. We like she she. That's what we like. We like she she. He like he he. So that's why you guys hear me say he he. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead. So Diana's like, wait, Drew, what are you doing? He's like, what the fuck are you talking about, Diana? We've already discussed what we got to do. She like, no, 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 no. Let's make sure that Monet is all right. Let's make sure that Monet is all right. He like, nah, I ain't got no. I ain't got no time for that. Put the gun back there. Pause. Hey, yo. Now they get these text messages and Monet wants them at the crib. So when they get to the crib, we got the Tejada family meeting. Now, the Tejadas, we've never been able to depend on the Tejadas. Let's be real. The Tejadas ain't no one we believe. They ain't no one we trust. Monet is mad as hell. And the reason Monet is mad is because Noma told her, stay your ass at the crib, man. Don't come out. We don't want to see you. We don't want to hear you. None of that. Stay your ass at the crib. So now everyone's sitting at the house and they trying to process what's going on. We got Janet over in the corner. Last week, we know Kane said, Janet, get the fuck out of here. We don't want to deal with you. Now you're looking at me and you're thinking, what's wrong with Mo? Is his head hurting? No, 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 no. Right now, I'm thinking on a perspective. I'm thinking if I was a Tejada, what's going through my mind right now? And I'm trying to overprocess and analyze each individual character. But the problem is the Tejada family is so fucked up. There's so many thoughts going through these niggas' heads. None of them are having the right thoughts. Diana is pregnant. Diana's thinking about who the fuck the baby daddy is. Kane, he's goddamn miscombobulated because Effie threw that thing on him last night, but he knows that he needs to boss up with Noma. Drew is sitting here looking at his mama, knowing that he wants to get rid of his mama, but he can't do it because Diane is here and him and Kane are beefing at the moment because they want to figure out who's next in line. On top of all that, none of them know who the fuck Janet is or what the fuck Janet got going on in the corner. But 
everyone knows that Monet is upset right now with the primary breadwinner, which is Noma. So Monet talking about she fired me. Everyone else is like, Monet, she don't talk to us about the work schedule. She tells us what we need to do. And now Drew is getting a text message. Go to Obi's house. Ain't heard this nigga. Go to his house. Figure it out. Kane, what we need you to do is run the operation for Obi until we can figure out what the fuck he got going on. So we're depending on Drew to get that shit going on. Diana has no responsibility because in her responsibility is just eating for two kids and making sure that this baby, Salim, uh, uh, Talim or Salik, whoever the fuck this kid's father is, she needs to figure out who that is. But she also needs to make sure that Monet is all right because, remember, she was the mastermind behind going to Kate Egan's house with the letter that Cooper Sacks sent to Monet Tejada, gave it to Kate Egan, saying, Kate, give this to Tommy from Monet. So right now, the whole Tejada family is all fucked up. I know I'm saying a lot and it sounds confusing, but just follow me, man. I got you. I got this shit all laid down. For some reason, I, I forget what I'm supposed to do at work in real life. But I can remember all this shit that's going on in power. So it's a lot of shit going on in the Tejadas. So when I do this, I'm just thinking, OK, where can we go right? Because no one in the Tejada family goes right. All these niggas is wrong and fucked up in the mind. We already know about the flashbacks that we got about Diana lying because that was Monet's story. We talked about that shit three hours ago. Right now, we're talking about all the Tejada kids. And we're trying to encompass what's the next step for each one of these individuals without fucking up the next person but we got to fuck up the next person because in order for one of the Tejadas to survive it's just like when you watch like baby eagles you go to the nat geographic you go up there We just went mute, but now we back. Monet was feeding these niggas at one point, but now it's who is going to survive? Who is going to be the next person to take over the Tejada family business? Who is going to be the next person to boss up with Monet, boss up with Noma, and take over the whole operation? So we got to get rid of the wheat. Now, I got a whole video, and I keep emphasizing Drew versus Kane. We know that's going to happen. It's coming sometime episode four five six seven eight nine we don't know what the fuck is gonna happen but it's gonna happen now the whole tahadas family disperses but we got to continue to follow them to understand where the storyline is going hit that like button hit that subscribe button i'm trying to knock this out for y'all if i'm going too fast just let me know hey mo slow that shit down nigga you're talking that shit right now but we know about you going to get obi out of here we don't need to go touch on that um what we can say is um after we get Obi out of jail, we know we talked to Davis. We know we got Pearly representing Obi. We know about the deal that went down between uh, Obi and Drew. But so let's speed it up, and we're gonna go ahead and go to. I think it was the next scene was uh, at o uh, at Noma's house, or was it Diana being pregnant? Let me see. Which one was first? Uh, Obi being unalived. Okay, Obi being unalived was next. All right, man, here we go. So now we get to the crib, but we already discussed it from Obi's standpoint. Now we got to remember, Drew and Kane are in the back. Drew and Kane have been, you know what I'm saying, tit for tat with each other. Remember when they came to the house for Monet saying, what y'all know about Noma? This motherfucker fired me, well, suspended me over a text message. Remember, Drew was like, yeah, man, you, we 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 doing good. No one got something going on. And Kane said, nah, Drew, you think you're doing something, huh? You think you got business to handle? He's like, I got to go handle some business, a.k.a. go to Obi's house. Now, Drew did get Obi out of jail via Davis with Pearlie to represent him. Kane, his whole job was to run the operation the day to day. So when they get to the house, we got to give Drew a little bit of respect. Because remember, when Drew got to the house, Drew said, me and Kane ain't have nothing to do with this. So when he turned his back on Obi, he gave a shout out to his brother and let Noma know, even though me and Drew are in competition, I mean, me and Kane are in a competition, we didn't have anything to do with Obi and whatever he got going on talking to Don Carter. So I know a lot of people skipped over that, but we got to give Drew a little bit of credit. Did y'all catch on to that where he said me and Kane didn't have nothing to do with this? Prior to Obi being unalived, or did y'all just skip over that part and look at it as Kane versus Drew? 
because Drew did do he did do a little bit in the favor of Kane by saying me and Kane didn't have anything to do with Obi being arrested. We didn't have anything to do with him talking to the police about whatever the information he gave. Did y'all peep that? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. You know, what I mean? I'm just I'm, I'm going to slow it down a little bit, but I'm just trying to get through this so we can get it up under six hours so I can actually edit this shit. You know, what I mean? we go over six hours and then I can't edit it on YouTube. So I'm trying to make sure we get like five and a half hours, maybe five forty five. The unaliving of uh, Obi happens after this, so. All of this is because Drew is like, listen, we ain't have nothing to do with that shit. Trey said Drew is a snake. Yeah, I mean, Drew is a snake, but this is a dope game. Let's remember, let's let's be honest. In the dope game, Raising Kane's theme song tells us it's all a part of the game. Now, when Effie was telling back in high school, they were saying it wasn't nothing. When you're in a dope game, how can I put this? Uh... When, 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 when you're in a beef, they say you, you pick your side. You, you pick your side. This is who you with. Your loyalty is to that side, right? So Drew and Kane, their loyalty is to Noma. Their loyalty isn't to Obi. So is it is it snakeish? Yeah, because you're trying to, you know, saying you're trying to progress yourself within the organization. But your loyalty is to Noma, and if if you telling Noma to protect the organization that you're working for, it's no different than let's say your family has a business. Let's all right. Let's say your family has a business. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, how can we do it? Let's say your family owns a juicery. You got your parents, they own the place. Now you like the, you like the manager of it. If there's an employee that isn't a family member, that's like, let's say giving out free drinks, stealing like free cars, you know, after every five drinks, you get one free drink on the house. Let's say they're giving out these free cars. But this is your family business. Are you going to tell your family members, hey, ma, pa, we got an employee stealing? Because your loyalty is to your family. So is that is that being a snake for telling the person that you're loyal to that, hey, someone's stealing from us? Someone is talking to the police? You see what I'm saying? You got to look at it from that aspect. This is the This is the dope game. First of all, you can't trust anybody, but your loyalty should always be to whoever's at the top unless they screwing niggas over. You see what I'm saying? So if you got a family business and there's a and you're the manager and employees are stealing from that family business, they're stealing from your family. You see what I'm saying? So what Drew is looking at it as, okay, Obi was in there talking to the police. I don't know necessarily what he was talking about. Even if he stood 10 toes down, I probably should tell know about this because he was trying to keep it hush hush don't tell her that i was fucking with the police so I, I won't say drew is a snake for this i mean it is snakish because he did promise you to move you up but if he's willing to do backhand deals behind the boss's back then it kind of got you looking at him what are you doing in order for you to you know what I'm saying look out for me that's what i'm saying trey i mean i'm not knocking you though like what dre did i mean not dre drew did it's some dre shit like hell no nah, let me get this nigga about the way but he did look out for Kane, though. That's what I would. That's what I was getting at. He looked out for Kane. Yeah, we threw Obi up under the bus, but he looked out for his brother. I, I know it's, a, it's we all over the place right now, man. But fuck it, fuck it. So they on the live Obi. Let me see what's next for the Tahada kids. Oh yeah. So then we see Diana. Now. Let me ask you this, though. I'm going to ask you, Trey, specific, uh, specifically. What do you think about... What do you think about Bruce being the one knowing that Diana is pregnant? What 
What y'all think about Brushandra being the only one that knows? Kadeesh said, you're going to run her mouth. Hey, that's what I was thinking. And, and why was why was Diana Googling pregnancy stuff while she was walking? Like, she out in the public with it. They going down the stairs, she Googling pregnancy. Like, what? This is some shit you need to look at in the dorm room. This is some shit you need to look at at the house. This ain't no stuff that you just walking down the hallway. Hey, what a uh, how'd I say it? Rue boys, Rue boys, Cam. She got the biggest mouth. Man, Bruce like she walking down. That's like being a dope dealer and saying, How do you break down a brick? And you just walking around with, How do you break down a brick on your phone? She said, Hey, pick that up. Why are you Googling this? What were you Googling this in class? Like, what were you looking for? Google this shit at the comfort of your own home, Diana. She Googling pregnancy shit, leaving class. Like, what, Diana, what the fuck is wrong with you? Now, I don't know. I don't know nothing about, like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Your body, your choice. Do what the fuck you want, but really? She walking down the stairs, la de -de, pregnancy. How many weeks? Bruce Sandra talking about, girl, you pregnant? What you gonna do about school? How you gonna finish school with pregnancy? Diana talking about, this is the only opportunity I got to do my school. Bruce Sandra is like, girl, I don't know about that. Diana said, listen, you the only person that know about this. Whenever someone tells you you the only person that know about this, that uh, the, whoever the other person is, they're about to tell all the information. She's going to let this shit slip up. She might tell. She might tell L or she might. Oh, Lord. How do all right? Two scenarios. How do we believe that Bruchandra is going to give up this information? She's either going to tell Effie, like Hustling there said, or hear me out. When Braden comes around to L, Bruchandra might say some shit on some. You need to tell your boy to look out for Diana and the baby. You know what I mean? Because she already been hating on Brayden. I can see some shit like that. She been hating on Brayden. You got you a groupie already. I can see Brayden coming around. You need to tell your boy to step up for his baby. Oh, man. Brissandria. Oh, man. But, I mean, we know that. We know. I, I Well, I can't really go that route because in the trailer uh, for episode four, we do see Tariq encountering Diana. But that would have been cool if they did it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe Tariq gets that information and he's like, uh, maybe Tariq doesn't believe the information from Bruce or let's say Braden gets the information. Okay, Rude Boys. Yeah, you were thinking the same thing. I mean, like maybe she tells Tariq. Ah, damn. Yeah, Bruce Andre, All right. Put a five in the chat if we trust Brusandria to keep her mouth fucking shut. Put an eight in the chat if we don't trust Brusandria. A five if we trust her to shut up. A eight if we believe that Brusandria is going to be the one to spill the beans. Let me know, man. Let me know. We're going to continue on with the Tejada family, man. Uh, 
Ken, okay. So Kane ends up showing up to uh Mon. I mean, not no Mon. Kane shows up to Diana. God damn, not Diana. Kane shows up to Noma's house. Man, the Tejadas are all over the place. Now Kane was leaning on his door. I was like, man, this nigga Kane look a little whack. Everybody's saying, hey, okay, good. We all in agreement. We do not trust Busandra, aka Miss Starter the Rico, aka set Lauren up, aka put a blunt in the drawer, hating ass mother effer. But Kane's over here. He's talking about, hey, no one, you know what's up. No one's like, what the fuck do you want, Kane? She's doing a spreadsheet. Yeah, Kane's like, let me let me holler at you a little bit. I helped you get everything. And Kane grabs her hand, the same thing that Obi did. Now, you know, there's those memes that are going around. You know, they got like the ugly guy. If the ugly guy compliments uh, an attractive woman at work, they call it sexual harassment. But if it's an attractive gentleman saying, hey, you look beautiful today, they call it flirting. That's what's going on right now. Remember last week or was it week one? I can't even remember. Obi grabbed Noma's hand talking about let's just get let us get through this together, Noma. Noma said, nigga, what the fuck is, get your hands off of me. Noma snatched her hand and looked at that nigga Obi like, nigga, do you need me to stab you again? But when Kane grabbed her hand, she was like, oh. Money made the Gucci go woo woo. Kane made the Gucci go woo woo. She looked at this nigga Kane like, oh, they ain't never had no nigga check me. And they getting close. They getting close, close, closer than close. So she looking at this nigga. I'm like, oh, here we go. That nigga came about to knock it out the board. But we don't get to that moment because hating ass Effie shows up. Effie looking good, too. But I don't care how good Effie's looking. When that boss, the one with the bricks, start to throw that thing on you. Let me just give you guys a rough scenario. Mo got a Mo got like a little eight and a half, a little nine laid up with him. But if Noma called me up and me and Noma, we getting we getting close with each other, and Noma got them things, Noma got them bricks. That eight, that nine and a half, that ten that I got at the crib. I done moved on to bigger and better things. What up, Noma? You know what I'm saying? I need a I need a woman that's gonna match my fly. You know what I mean? I'm a you know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a I'm a middle wage. You know what I'm saying? I'm a I'm a thousandaire. You know, I ain't no millionaire. You know what I'm saying? I'm about a I'm 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 around a half a thing. You know what I mean? I'm around a half a ticket. I ain't no millionaire. I'm gonna be honest with you. I ain't no millionaire. I ain't nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? I did well for myself. But if Monet showing up with them things, them brickety brickety bricks. Then I got to go with them bricks, all white bricks, off white bricks. I got to go with them brick. No more come around in my life right now. Y'all going to be like, damn, that nigga Mo a groupie. Well, Mo, Mo is straight. You know what I'm saying? Mo is retired for five years. I'm only working to be over in Europe. But if, uh, you know what I'm saying? If no more, if no you know what I'm saying? If no more, what, what the Capitals do? Yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? If no more come around, you, man, you, you know what I'm Nigga, I'm going crazy. If no one come around trying to throw that thing on Mo. What you need, you know what? <laughs> Effie talk about Mo. I'm like, you don't get the fuck out of here, you broke motherfucker. You don't get the fuck out of here. If no one throwing that thing on you, boy, I got to take this opportunity to thank myself. You feel me? I'm just saying. So, Kane and Noma, they getting close. It's a Tejada shit. We got like 10 minutes. We're going to finish this up. Then we'll get into the administrative group. But they getting a little close, but Effie shows up. And the reason Effie shows up is because she got the drugs that Kane, not Kane, Tariq gave her trying to set up for uh, Roman. So they like the drugs that we found on the campus. We found these on the campus. And Kane is looking like, man, we found this on the campus. She's like, yeah, I did. So I want to let you know that there might be some competition. So Noma is like, okay, who is this from? Kane's like, um, I know this. This is that nigga Roman shit. She's like, all right, Kane, I need you to get out there. Thanks, Effie, for this information. Now, Anya shows up. And at this point, we still don't know much about Anya. Just a spoiled kid. But 
you know the the the, the crazy thing is Anya's closer to Kane's age. Kane's is like Kane is like 22 because Zeke was 23, so it might be like 23. Uh, they're 20 years old, 19, 20 years old. That's where Tariq and them are at, so Anya's around their age. Kane is like 22, 23 at this point. Anya's looking at them like, who the fuck are these kids working for you? Now, Kane and Effie, they got their own little relationship going on, but this is kind of severed because Effie did catch him Real close to Noma. <laughs> King said four hours. This man is off of Adderall. Nah, man, I'm good, man. I'm off of uh, I'm off of a uh, quarter liter of uh, Remy. That's what I'm off of. You feel me? I do this though, man. I told y'all I went and took me a little nappy nap. I said we're gonna get up. We're gonna do this live, man. This is where we at. This is where we at. Turn it up a little bit. You know what I mean? This is where we at. All right, so Effie, she gets the drugs to Noma. We find out that Kane knows who this is. Kane goes to see this guy named Bird. Now, Bird works for Roman. Roman works for Zion. We were trying to figure out who works for who, how is it going to play down. So he's pulling up like, hey, y'all niggas is selling on our territory. So Bird is like, what territory? Stansfield. He's like, Stansfield? What the fuck? Who is Stansfield? I don't know who Stansfield is. Uh, not Tariq. Uh, Kane's go to damn. I'm getting all these niggas mixed up. Kane's go to is either to break a nigga's arm, break a nigga's forearm, or like break a nigga wrist. Remember in episode two where Drew choked old boy out, they end up trying to break his arm again. This nigga Kane, who is he a sensei? Body of sensei. This nigga know all the pressure points. This nigga Kane always trying to break someone's arm or something. This nigga must have took one class on how to break a nigga arm or wrist because that's the only move this nigga got. Kane is either going to shoot you or try to break your hand, your wrist, or your forearm. Maybe your elbow. I know the elbow, you just popped the other way. This nigga Kane only got one move. So whenever you see Kane, just put your hands behind your back because this nigga can't do nothing to you unless he shoots you. So he's talking to Bird. He's like, Bird, Bird, where's Roman's next drop off? You don't want me to whoop your ass. This nigga Bird, like, man, I don't even know. That nigga grabbed his hand. That nigga Bird said, All right, uh, just cross the 110th Street. Roman gotta break the cell on the street. Ooh, baby, just cross the hundred and ten street. Yeah, this nigga bird get to talking. Yeah, this nigga bird get the chirping. This nigga bird is telling everything. Like, damn, Bird, you didn't gave up all the information on Roman. This nigga Bird was like, look, man, I got kids. I want to survive. I just want to make it home by the end of the night. But then Kane said, all right, bet. I'm going to let my ass live, nigga. So now we got the information. Wait, did I label this wrong? Oh, man, I ain't even. Ah, oh, damn. I definitely labeled that shit wrong. All right. Kane and them isn't going up to Roman's crib. Well, not Roman's crib, but they go to the drop off that bird gave him the information. They end up blowing up the van. The van got all kinds of bricks back there. Now, let me just do the math real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is 16. Uh, eight times four is four, six, three, 16, 32, 32 bricks right here. 32 bricks, 25,000. Let me see how much that is right there. Now, how much money did they say that they lost when, when they got the call to Roman? Let's say roughly twenty five thousand eight hundred thousand dollars because they didn't lose a million dollars worth of product. I think it was like seven fifty, eight hundred. So roughly twenty to twenty five thousand dollars a brick. They had thirty two bricks that we seen. They got caught on fire. Everything got burnt down. Two hundred k, two hundred k. Well, we seen for sure. We seen uh, eight. 816, unless it's just two stacks, 
but it looks like it's a third power here. So 16 or 8, 16, 24. And if it's two rows, 24 times what? 2, 48, 48 bricks. Two hundred thousand divided by forty-eight bricks, four thousand a brick. They must have been selling weed. <laughs> they must have been selling weed. The numbers ain't making make 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 making sense. But this is wholesaling, so we never know. Rio was three hundred k. Well, that the three hundred k was for uh Tariq and Davis to get in there. Dutch said 3.37 a.m. Eastern. Yeah, man, you know. We still going. Like, we about to finish this up in like the next five minutes, and then we got the administrative group, and then we out of here five and a half hours. You know what I mean? And I might lay down and take me a little nappy nap. But hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Man, I do this for y'all. I definitely appreciate you guys staying up with me. Yeah, I got up. I had a, you know what I'm saying? I said I wanted to do evening lives for you guys so you guys can relax. Enjoy your time at the house. If you ain't stepping out, you know what I'm saying? Grab your drink. Put me up on the TV, you know what I'm saying? Watch off your phone, comment, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate all of that. You know what I mean? It's still an amazement to me for knowing, like, people get on here to listen to me just talk about TV shows. Like, to me, that's just dope. You know what I mean? All right, but let's continue on. So, Kane and them, they burn up the damn van. All right, from there, we got Kane blows up the van. Blah, 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 blah. We got Davis and Tariq. We kind of already talked about that. He was talking about putting in that 50K. Kane questions Effie, and the reason he's questioning Effie is because it ain't making sense. One plus one ain't equaling two. Two plus two is equaling seven. Seven plus one is eight, but eight plus two is ten, but minus six is four plus seven will give us 11, but 11 minus three is what? Eight, and then eight equals two plus two times two, which is, wait, two plus two is four times two is eight, so I was right about that. So right now, Kane is trying to figure out this equation and wondering how the fuck is this math and math and because wait a minute, you found this dope on campus, but Roman wasn't selling dope on campus because when I talked to Bird, he didn't know nothing about Stansfield. So what's happening? And we know that Diana, she's on campus, but she ain't moving no way. She's pregnant at the moment. So we know that she ain't got nothing to do with none of this dope. We know that no one else is really moving dope because Braden and Tariq are out of the game. So Kane's looking at Effie. He's thinking, Effie, what the fuck is really going on here? Where did you get this dope from? Now, she's not admitting that Tariq gave her the dope because she's realizing that she may have fucked up because Kane was actually out on the streets. And you know, word travels fast within this organization. So he's like, what is the real play here? What is the long game that you and Tariq might be running behind my back? And she's trying to downplay it like, nah, there ain't no long play. But he's saying, well, if there ain't no long play, then why was there dope on this campus? And where the fuck did you find that dope at? Hmm? And she's trying to, like, well, you know, I, I did my own little research and that's why I found it. But then she tries to flip the script on Kane. So now we're looking at Kane like, wait a minute. Kane is actually a little bit smarter than what we initially thought because originally we were looking at Kane as the master fuck up. But I guess he got a little bit of Noma on the tip of his DIC, pause all of that, but it ain't really paused because he was getting some cutty. And guess who didn't get no cutty tonight? I didn't get no cutty. You ain't get no cutty. And if you're on this live right now, you ain't get no cutty. So we're trying to figure this shit out just like Kane is trying to figure this shit out. So Kane is talking to Effie, and Effie's trying to downplay it like, hey, let me finish this application up. There ain't no long game with me and Tariq. But what about the long game between you and Noma? A.K.A. Daddy Long Stroke. I said, ooh, ha, Daddy Long Stroke. What movie is that from? Now, Kane is like, oh, what do you mean? You jealous now? You jealous now? Evie said, no, nah, I ain't jealous. But I just peeped what was going on. So now Kane is like, okay, I got to kind of downplay this because you don't never want to mess up your in-house cutty. When you got in-house cutty, that's different than going out and getting new cutty. New cutty is always the best cutty because it's new cutty. Now, I always wear protection. But new cutty is always better than in-house cutty because you kind of get kind of frustrated and upset with that in-house cutty. That new cutty, you ain't got to deal with all that nonsense. But that's a whole nother story. So Kane is like, listen. Whatever I got going on with Noma is because I'm trying to boss up. I'm trying to elevate myself within the game. So Effie, she's she got a little bit of jealousy, but at the same time, we always know that she was going behind Kane's back to fuck with Tariq. Remember, Kane snuck into the jail 
as a lawyer trying to represent Effie. Effie didn't want nothing to do with that. But as soon as she got out, she went with goddamn Tariq. Now, she's been apologizing to Tariq last week. Tariq, are we okay? I told you about Kane. Kane ain't, Tariq ain't trying to fuck with that. But we know that Tariq needed Effie to do the whole Roman situation, even though he played her. So when you look at the big picture, Tariq pay, played Effie in order for him to gain some traction in the game and to goddamn get his indoor to goddamn working with Zion, getting rid of, um, uh, God damn, Roman. This whole situation is all kinds of fucked up. But you know, don't worry about it. I'm going to connect all the dots, and that's what we're doing right now. Now we got to take it back to the family reunion. So at this point, boom, we got shit cracking. We know about Braden talking to L, potentially setting that shit up. Kane gets back to Noma's house. Hey, Noma, this is what's going on because guess what? Davis had already came over here after talking to Tariq, and Tariq was trying to set up with Davis. Hey, I need some money. We talked about that on uh, Tariq's story, the 50000 that Davis put up, but he wants a little bit of interest. We already know he's taking 20% off the top, so we can go ahead and assume with this 50000 he's going to want another 10%. So out of the 100% that's going to be coming out to Tariq and Braden, 30% is going to go to Davis, the 20% that he initially asked for by introducing him to the plug, and then the 10% that he's putting on top of the 50000 So 30% out of every 100000 is $30,000 that's going to go to Davis without Davis having to lift a finger. He goes over to talk to Noma after talking to Tariq. We know about this because we've already discussed Tariq's story. So Davis is like, listen, Noma, we got information on this and this. We know about Obi, all of this. We know about Don Carter. Let's go ahead and handle this. Let's go out and eat. Now, Noma kind of played him off. Now, after that, we know Kane pulled up. And when Kane pulled up, we already seen Kane try to check Noma. Noma is in, you know what I'm saying? Hey, shout out to Queen, you know what I'm saying? She know about that, you know what I'm saying? Daddy long stroke. So Kane shows up. Kane already checked Noma. When Kane checked Noma before Effie showed up, sometimes you got to pop out and show niggas. And when Kane popped out and showed Noma that he ain't scared, he ain't backing down, we need to be business partners. Let me tell you something. Them draws got W E T. Wet T. Wet T. So he pulled back up. And at this point, it's like, okay, you know what I'm saying? If the ball's going to throw a little bit of something, something, he pushed up on her and she pushed that thing back up on him. She turned around and said, you know what, Kane? I'm going to give you some of this, you young whippersnapper. We're going to see if you can handle this thing. Now, Kane went in that thing wrong, and that's the worst thing that a young man can do is let one of these old cougars let you hit that thing raw diggity now i know we getting a little off subject but this makes a lot of sense with kane she threw that thing on kane see when you get that older stuff you don't know how to act i was 18 i had this 31 year old i'm talking about oh lord life was crazy i was just a young boy still playing with my toys hanging out with the guys until i realized baby stop running around with me baby Baby, stop running. That's when I was 18 years old. So I can only imagine what Kane got going on with Noma throwing that thing on her and she got them bricks. But let's go ahead and keep it moving because, hey, all I can do is tell you what I saw on the screen. I ain't making none of this up. We all know what both talk about. Let's get it going. Now, Noma didn't threw that thing on Kane. Kane was just over there with Effie. Effie then turned him down. And you know, ain't nothing better than someone turning you down and you got some re rebound waiting on you. But guess what? This ain't no rebound. This is a full court open layup, open lane. This nigga Kane is in and out doing what he got to do. He got the plug in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He got little bitty Noma. In his hands, he's got little bitty Noma. In his hands, he's got little bitty Noma. In his hands, he's got the whole Noma in his hands. He's got all of the bricks. In his hands, he got all of the bricks. In his hands, he got all of the bricks. 
in his hands, he's got the bricks in his hands. No more throw the kitty in his hands. No more throw the kitty in his hands. I said, no more throw the kitty in his hands. He's got the kitty in his hands. The nigga got the key to the city. Fuck what Evie talking about. Fuck with all the, the girl that he was staying with in season one. Talk about this nigga got Noma in his hands. This is the top of the mountain. All you got to do is not fuck it up. All you have to do is exactly what Noma says going on. Now, moving from there, let's go ahead and knock this thing on out. We got the family dinner. Boom. After the family dinner. We know everything that went on. Diana and them, crazy. The whole plot is revealed. The message comes through from Tariq. The ring camera footage. Kane sees it. And he's trying to stand on business. Drew, Diana, they got to get the fuck out of here. Monet don't want them at the house. Monet don't want nothing to do with them. And Kane is a loose cannon. Kane is a loose cannon. Kane wants all of them unalive, man. And that's the Tejada story, man. We're just going to keep it simple like that, man. We got the administrative group. We got like 20 minutes left. Let's go ahead and knock this thing on out. What y'all think about the Tejadas? Who is the weak link in the Tejada family? Is it Diana and um, Salik or Talim, whatever you want to call the baby? Is it Drew? Is it Kane? Is it Monet? Which one is it? Who is the weak link in the Tejada family bloodline? That's what we need to figure out. That's all we that's all we trying to figure out right now.